To be honest, it'd be kind of weird if she didn't have worries. On this episode. We want to deal with this straight away. I can't help but worry about the spread of parasites. All right, sorry, sweetheart. You're not going to like me after this. What I think we should do is get Plugger in a CT scan. Seeing her up close, I just can't really believe how big she is. There you go. I don't know how I'm going to fit her into a CT scanner. Just push her ever so slightly forward then. Oh, oh. oh my god. But first... She scrunches her little eyes up against the light. She sort of half closes them a lot of the time and they do look really sore. Okay, surgery time today, baby. It can get so bad that you'd recommend removing an eye. Ew, this one's much worse. Hi Rob, excuse me. Mm. We've just had a little Kara here. She's been surrendered. She's had ongoing eye issues. Okay, let's have a look, little one. Oh, you poor one. Dear little dog. In Outer Sydney, Nurse Anne has brought Rob a surprise patient to add to an already busy day. The eyes are awful, aren't they? The eyelids are a big worry. What's going on with your eyes, Bubby, with your eyeballs? I better go in the dark room and have a look. Sure. Let's go have a look. Cara was brought in by Greta from Jack Russell Rescue. She's worried about the seven-year-old's struggling eyesight. Cara was found dumped in a car park. So she came in to rescue and she is the cutest little munchkin. She gets right up close to your face and when she gets excited, she likes to chew your face. She's just so cute. Okay, let's have a look with the lights on first. Hey, Bubby. Hey. Cara's eyes are so painful. She scrunches her little eyes up against the light. She sort of half closes them a lot of the time and they do look really sore. She's obviously in pain. Let's just turn the lights out for a sec and we'll have a good look, eh? Good girl. There's sort of signs of crystallisation of the lenses. Yeah, on both sides. Might be nuclear sclerosis. It may well be cataracts. The cornea, that cap on the eyeball, is all clear on both sides. No scar tissue and no ulcers. But the eyelids are... She has entropion. Where the eyelids are rolling in, and so the hair touches the eyeball. Imagine having a hair in your eye all the time. It's very hard to live with. This one's not as bad, but it still needs to be. We certainly have to fix this entropion. Those eyelids are rolling right in onto her eyeballs. So she's got hair scraping on those eyeballs. Okay, surgery time today, baby. Now, looking at this, we've got to get that hair out of the eyes. We've got to lift the eyelids, both top and bottom, away from the eyeball. There's no other option. She's going to have constant irritation, and eventually it's got to affect the vision. Try it, baby. Right. It can get so bad that you'd recommend removing an eye. And in some cases, I know both eyes had to be removed. She's a tough little dog, this one. Hi, Georgia. Hey. Wow. She's so beautiful. In Sydney, Sashvet Olivia has come to one of the city's most popular attractions to help out with a very big problem. This is Plugger. She came to us in 2020. Oh, wow. And she's made herself right at home. She's now 33 years old. Oh, wow. I'm here with Georgia, Plugger's keeper at Sea Life Sydney Aquarium. And I'm really excited to see one of my favorite animals, an endangered green sea turtle. Hey, Plugger. Hello. She's huge. Plugger was rescued as a hatchling. She was very sadly being attacked by a seagull, so she really luckily came into care. You and Plugger have a pretty special connection, right? Yeah, when I'm over diving in the tank, she comes up and kind of sits right next to you and you can't really do your work. Oh, oh they're so sweet. It's gorgeous. And so tell me, why are we looking at Plugger today? What's going on? 
So we noticed some swelling around her back blubbers. Okay. And so her appetite was changing, which is unusual for Plugger. And so we did an investigation and we found that she has eggs, okay. which is really exciting. Okay. So basically we just want to see where those eggs are sitting in their body, whether they're ready to be laid, and to see if we can help her along. Yeah. Okay. Plugger is a pretty happy, healthy turtle but some follicles were found in her belly. And basically what these are are immature eggs. And so we're not really sure what these follicles mean. And today I'm here to find out a bit more. We need to find out if she's ready to lay those eggs or whether she needs a bit of extra help. So what I think we should do is get Plugger in a CT scan. That's gonna give us a lot more information that we need about those eggs. But the problem is obviously finding a CT scanner that's big enough. Most dog and cat CT scanners, I think they're going to be too small for her because she weighs 120 kilos. 120 kilos? Yeah, okay, that's huge. I'm truly amazed by Plugger's size. Seeing her up close, I just can't really believe how big she is. I'm used to working with turtles that are a few hundred grams and she's 120 kilos. So I don't know how I'm going to fit her into a CT scanner. Plugger, you're huge. Wow. On the outskirts of Sydney, Rob is about to start eye surgery on rescued Jack Russell Cross Cara. Yeah. It's 152. As well as eye issues, the seven-year-old shows clear signs of neglect leading up to her recent rescue. Looking at her history that I've spoken to people at the rescue organisation, she's had such really bad start to life. So nutrition suffered a lot. She's got lots of health issues. It is plastic surgery. What we will do is actually cut a piece of skin under the eyelid for the bottom eyelid and the top eyelid. And we'll take that bit of skin and throw it away and then sew it all down together so it pulls the eyelid away from the eyeball. Okay, let's start. If you pull that form down. Thank you. They actually do this in humans as well to make people look younger around the eyes. Old fellas like me don't care about that. Immediately after the surgery, she may look a bit hangdog almost, but it tightens up. You've got to be Super careful where you put each suture. And remember, you've got a sharp needle right next to an eyeball. Just hasten slowly and get each suture in place exactly where it's got to be. Okay, top eyelid. Here we go. Looking at her eyelids, the outside part where the eyelids come together has been nicked or something in a bad way because it's, it's separated. The two ends of those eyelids don't meet at all. Although Kara's a rescue dog, Rob thinks there's been a previous but unsuccessful attempt to stop her eyelashes from scratching her eyeballs. There's been some trauma of some kind. Now if someone's tried to fix them in the past, the reason some of these eyelids are turning around is they've got adhesions on both eyes at the side of the eyes, the, the top and bottom eyelids don't come together. There's a little gap there, which tells me someone has tried some sort of surgery on her. And somehow we've got to try and change things around to stop her suffering. Okay, we'll turn her over and do the other side. The failed surgery is making Rob's job of reconstructing Kara's eyelids far more difficult. So, Ew, this one's much worse. As he starts work on her right eye, that task is going to be even more challenging. Hmm, that's going to be a tough one. Yeah. Flagger, here. Yeah. Good girl. At the Sea Life Sydney Aquarium, Olivia is watching giant turtle Plugger being carefully coaxed from her watery home and into a sling. 
a good girl. Good girl, plugger. Thanks to Olivia, the 120 kilogram green sea turtle will soon be on her way to get a scan to determine how far along her pregnancy is. Most CT scans that we use for dogs and cats and other small animals are just going to be way too small for plugger. But fortunately, I think I have the answer. A bit further. She needs to go that way. OK, I think she's good. I think the CT scan that's going to fit Plugger is going to be a horse CT scan. So this is a much bigger CT scanner. It's built in lower to the ground. So it means that we can get Plugger into the CT scanner safely and we can get the scans done that we need. Plugger will travel across town for her CT scan, accompanied by a large entourage. Transporting such a massive passenger is a major challenge. Wait for her to take a big breath and strap it. Because she's so big, she's 120 kilos. We're using hoists, hydraulic lift trolleys, and lots of people to move her around. <laughs> Plugger's keeper, Georgia, will try to keep the much-loved turtle from overstressing en route to the equine hospital. There's many obstacles to overcome today because of how big she is. So there's a team of about 12 of us, so we really have all hands on deck. Getting Plugger to the horse hospital will be the first of many difficulties. But yeah, that's a little unusual. But, um, yeah, I thought it was bizarre. Yeah. How long? For how long? I would say for like about a week or so. At Edwards Clinic in Miami, cat-loving receptionist Yami's new rescue kitten Benelli is the center of attention. She's so pretty. She is. But Yami's noticed something worrying with her precious little girl. She is. Hey guys. Who's this little guy? Yeah. This Good was Benelli. This was uh, one of the rescues. The mom was abandoned in the bushes by the side of the building. Uh, I found her there. It turned out she was pregnant. Brought her in and um, did radiographs, ultrasounds. She had four. This is one of the four. That's awesome. And I just noticed that her uh, butt was smelling like anal glands. Oh. Which I thought it was bizarre. How often? Do Every day. So oh. I thought it was weird. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she's a stray. Has she been dewormed or anything nothing. like that? Nothing. She hasn't been seen, no vaccine, nothing. Well, I mean, to be honest, it'd be kind of weird if she didn't have worms. The fact that she hasn't been dewormed, she was a stray, I think we should get a fecal sample and see if there's anything that shouldn't be there. Okay. Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. All right, let's go. You can already see the bond between these two. I mean, they're practically inseparable. Stray cats are unfortunately common, and so it's great to see that these guys got a home straight away. What we're going to do next is unfortunately a bit unpleasant for her. Rather than waiting for her to give us a stool sample, given the concern for parasites, we're going to get a sample now. So what you're going to have to do is hold her, and I'll use this stick, unfortunately, to get a stool sample. All right, sorry, sweetheart. You're not going to like me after this. I'm sorry, sweet. I'm sorry. I know you're doing so well. Well done. Okay. So I'm going to go have a look at this under the microscope, see if there's any kind of parasite eggs, and then if there is, we'll use the right kind of medication to clear it up. Thank you, Doc. Oh, it's such a great experience. It's like having a newborn. <laughs> it's fun. Always keeps you on your toes. <laughs> Right now, I'm filling the sample up with a certain solution that's going to cause all the parasite eggs to float to the top of the surface. And I'm going to put a little microscope slide on the top, and that's going to collect all the fecal eggs. So that way, when I look at this thing under the microscope, if there's fecal eggs, I'll see them. So we're just going to leave that for a couple of minutes, come back, and then I'll have a look. We want to deal with this straight away because I mean, this kitten's already kind of been passed around to staff members, giving him a cuddle, but I can't help but worry about the spread of parasites at the same time.
the surgery is designed for a specific anatomy that should be here. That anatomy is not there at the moment, and I've got to try and work around that. In Sydney, Rob is facing an enormous challenge, reconstructing Cara's inward turning eyelids due to an apparent botched surgery to try to correct the same defect in the past. So the top eyelid there and the bottom eyelid there should be joined in there, just one continuum. But you can see that gap there. And I would think someone's cut it to try and open up the eyelids. Rob has already corrected the fault in the left eye of the seven-year-old Jack Russell cross. All good? Mm -hmm. You happy? Yes. Here we go. Now he must try to do the same for the right eye, where the damage is even greater. Okay. Pull back the skin for me. Beautiful. I just need that swab there for me. Thank you. Isn't she lovely nature? Gorgeous. Must have had terrible patience, this dog, not to be a, an angry dog. It's been going on for so long. And see, a lot of skin's been removed here, and we'll suture that defect close to pull that eyelid up. It's coming together okay, but you've got to be real patient. One suture at a time, just bringing it together. I won't know, probably until the end, that last suture, how it's going. In actual fact, that looks reasonably okay now. We've got some lift off there, haven't we? You yes, see have. it turn then? So now you can see real margins of those eyelids. Before the surgery, you couldn't see those margins, and I'm very happy with that. That's it. Okay. okay. All right. I better give Jack Russell Rescue a call, let them know that she's all done. She looks like she's done a few rounds in the boxing ring and come second, which is typical post-eye surgery. It looks pretty bad. Okay, let's ice it down. There'll be swelling and there'll be problems to come, but the first step has been accomplished and the first step's the biggest step, this surgery. And it's a great outcome for her. Good girl, good girl. On Sydney's outskirts, green sea turtle Plugger has arrived safely at the equine centre for her pregnancy scan. So how'd she go on the drive? Yeah, really well. She was calm, um, taking lots of breaths. Oh, here we go. Olivia will be working with Dr Michael, Plugger's regular vet from the Sea Life Sydney Aquarium. We're going to be giving sedation in the van. The girls are just going to get in first and just put a numbing cream yeah. on her neck. Thank you for finding a CT scanner large enough to accommodate her body size. Hopefully we get the answers that we're looking for. Michael tells me that the ultrasounds that have been done in Plugger have shown that there are lots of follicles or immature eggs, but we can't really see everything with an ultrasound alone, especially because of Plugger's size. So I think the CT scan is going to be really good today because it's going to show us the number of follicles that we have there and where they're situated and whether this is going to be an issue for Plugger or not. And so where would you go, like if you're going like collateral, like here? Probably here. So that would be a good spot there. Yep. Like there. Yep. And yep. then you're just going sort of just, uh, just lateral it. to it. Yep angled towards the midline. Yeah. It's my job to sedate Plugger today and I'm feeling a little bit nervous because I normally work with smaller turtles and smaller animals. She's definitely the largest patient I've worked on for a very long time. I'll hold this back. It's nerve wracking to be giving her this sedation, but I know that she needs it to facilitate this CT scan. Good girl. Good girl, Plugger. You're all right. Good girl. Good girl. Brave Good girl. girl. All Nearly done. done. All done. Oh, so brave. Beautiful. Good girl. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, oh, yeah. With 120 kilogram plugger now sedated, she's ready for her CT scan. There you go. It's yeah. a recess. Yeah, when they slide her on just so that she can't yeah. twist and turn and come yeah. down. Yeah. 
be stressful. Mm, nice and quick. The team is anxious to make sure Plugger isn't injured as she's carefully moved onto the CT scanner bed. Oh, oh. Hang on, I'm good. Sure yep. Yeah. Ready? Oh. Guys, all right? It's too much stress for me. Oh my god. Hey, Greta, how are you? Good. Thanks for coming in. And She's had a big surgery today. In outer Sydney, little Cara is awake after major surgery on both eyes to correct a defect that was making it painful for her to see. She's a beautiful nature dog. She's just so sweet. Considering everything that she has been through today, even put her in the red blanket so the blood wouldn't look so bad around the eyes. <laughs> Rob knows Greta from Jack Russell Rescue will give the affectionate seven-year-old the best chance of a full recovery. We've cut some of the skin away and pulled the eyelids up and down so that to open them up and hopefully she won't have hair rubbing on that eyeball. But now she needs a lot of TLC mm -hmm. and uh, I know that's one thing you people can give her. I thank you so much for, for taking her on. She's a loving dog. No matter who takes her on, I know Jack Russell Rescue, they've got big hearts, those people, and so she's going to have a home that's very loving. Okay, all yours. Oh, thank so you. She'll go home with some antibiotics, I've got some of those, some ointment for the eyes, yeah. and also some anti-inflammatories. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic for her. She's going to live the life of luxury. She'll have my backyard to sun puddle in and she can lay out there to her heart's content and don't have to worry about her eyes anymore. She's just a beautiful natured dog, so it's not going to take her long to find a loving but forever home. No, she's beautiful. You're in good hands now, darling. You've got a good outcome at the end. Let's go. Oh, She's sweet. Thank you. Okay. All yours. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. See you in two weeks. See you then. Oh my god. Guys, all right. Just push us ever so slightly forward then. In Sydney. Vets Michael, Olivia and their team are struggling to get massive turtle plugger in position for a CT scan. She needs to go a smidgen that way. Is that okay? Yeah, yellow line's here. So is okay, it, perfect. Is that, is that okay? Yep, yep, that's perfect, yep. We've managed to get plugger off the sling and into the CT scan up, nice and straight and safe, which we're all very pleased about. And that's no easy feat because of her sheer size. Yep. I think so. Are you happy with the way that that turned out? Looks all right, yeah. Yep. The next major obstacle is to inject a contrast dye into Plugger's leathery neck to make it easier to read the scan results. She's got really quite deep set veins and her neck's really thick. Yeah, from the So, all righty, let's go. Let's see how we go. No, and it was just not pushing through the skin. She is a big turtle, she has a big neck and she has very thick skin. But we need the contrast to illuminate all the internal structures in her body. That's really important. So we have to be able to find the vein and we have to do it quickly. If we take too long, we won't get any of the information that we need. It's just hard. I think I'm out. It's just hard because it's such a large volume yeah. in there. And, and then you've got to put all 120 yeah. mils in. That's why it's actually hard on the needle. Because this is a really challenging and delicate procedure, so we really need reinforcement here. Let's pop the ultrasound probe on. That is it. it I can see the turbulent blood flow in it. Fortunately, we've been able to get an ultrasound probe, and that ultrasound is going to help us to visualise the vein, and then we can direct our needle directly into the vein and know exactly where we're going and get that contrast in quickly. Now let's try this again. Yep. Right. Perfect. Nicely done. Good job, everyone. Finally, 
The images that will show where the plugger needs help to deliver the eggs growing inside her are ready to look at. Right. You can see the follicles here, quite a few, probably a good hundred or so. Mm. Wow, so there's a lot. But from what I'm seeing, they don't look fully developed eggs. Yeah, I'd agree with that. They're nearly there. Yeah. I think she just needs a bit more time. Just some more egg growing exactly. to do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So this is good news for now. It right? is. Yeah, so. yeah, it is. This CT scan has been invaluable for us in knowing what's going on internally in Plugger's body. We can see the follicles. We can't see any causes of concern here. <laughs> Olivia and Michael are relieved Plugger's eggs are healthy. And this very special mum-to-be is soon on her way home, where hopefully her follicles will grow to maturity. Right now, I'm having a look at the fecal sample and, and the material that floated to the top, and I'm looking specifically for parasite eggs. In Miami, Edward is trying to find out why receptionist Yami's new rescue kitten has an unusual smell coming from her bottom. It's not often you actually see the worm itself in the stool, unless it's a really heavy worm burden. So what I'm looking for is not actually a worm, but the, the worm eggs. So unfortunately she has hookworms and roundworms. So that's gonna be uh, certainly something to treat. That's gonna be causing the smell that she's described. Typically these parasites are tolerated okay by most cats. However, given how we're just a little kitten, we're still developing our immune system, we don't have a lot of reserves, so they can cause a lot of harm and even death if not treated properly. Okay, I see she's left me a few more samples to yes. work with. So she actually has two types of intestinal parasites. She's got roundworms and hookworms. So honestly, it's not a surprise that she has parasites. It's a bit of a surprise to see she's got two different kinds. The good news is that the kind of treatment involved, it's really simple. The treatment's gonna be two doses. So we're gonna give the first dose today, and then we're gonna give another dose in two weeks time. That plus cleaning her bedding and things she comes into contact with frequently, especially a litter box, and then that'll clear it right up. Then we get her on monthly parasite preventions and she'll be fine. Okay. A couple of things to mention. Uh, one, it can be zoonotic. The type of parasite is called a hookworm. That's something which can, in rare cases, affect people. Usually it causes skin issues rather than anything else. And the second thing is any kind of cats and dogs that are in contact with her would also need to be treated. I think we should assume that they also have the same parasites. I'll meet you at reception with the treatment and we'll give the first dose now. Sounds good. Thanks, All right. Doc. No worries. I'll get it sorted. This is the key with looking after cats and dogs. You want to get on top of these problems straight away because although you might think eh, it's a bad smell, it actually represents something that could be quite serious. So it's fantastic Yami brought this patient in and we can get on top of it straight away. Okay. Hey. Are we ready? We are ready. All right. All right, girl, let's do this. Don't worry, sweetheart. It tastes like banana. All right, sweetheart. Don't worry. It's delicious. Mmm, I know, I know. It's... Oh, oh yeah. a little bit on your head. Beautiful. Oh. oh, there you go. She even gave you some. <laughs> yeah, well done, we're okay. Kira. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Priscilla no will be bringing in the brother for treatment. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Alrighty, so we'll do that again two to three weeks' time and she'll be good. Sounds good. Done. Thank you. All Thank right. you, Doc. No worries. She's like, I'm ready to hide. To be able to work with these people, they love animals, they care for animals, you can see it in everything they do. It's just such a pleasant place to work, it's, it's an honor. You're doing good, Mama. You're a good girl. Plugger. How is that? Plugger has made it safely home to Sea Life Sydney Aquarium and is clearly happy to be back in the water.
a relief that she came through everything okay. Yeah, it's always been nerve-wracking, especially yeah. it's such a big tussle and it's such a big operation. Yeah, she's been great throughout the whole yeah. Yeah, early. Yeah. It's time for Olivia and pluggers keeper Georgia to reward the 33-year-old for coming through her pregnancy scan with flying colours. Bye, Bye, Here you go. Squid, her favourite food. Oh, good girl. You can see she clearly loves her food. You certainly haven't lost her appetite. It was a mammoth effort from everyone involved to date, but I'm really glad that we did this because there's nothing really of concern on her CT scan. So we can all sleep easy tonight, knowing that she just needs a little bit more time before she's going to be ready to lay those eggs. Oh, good girl. Good girl, plugger. I think the most exciting part of my entire day was being able to feed Plugger at the end. She's super friendly, she was coming straight up to me. It was really a new experience for me. I've never fed a green sea turtle. It's just really enjoyable. All right, I've got two for you here, Plugger. Oh, yum. You are a lucky girl. At the Sydney Guide Dog Centre, a very special delivery is taking place. Hey, Leah. Hello. <laughs> oh, you want to get out, do you? Hey. Leading the welcoming committee is the centre's head vet, Dr Caroline. What's coming on? It's really amazing to think that one of these little pups is coming in today could eventually help someone with low vision and blindness become so much more independent. This is Beanie. So he's the only yellow one in the litter. <laughs> Six weeks ago, Mum Yara gave birth to one gold and five black puppies at a guide dog volunteer's home. So it's a big day for them today. They're moving from their whelping home into the guide dog centre. There we go. For the next two weeks, the pups will stay at the centre until they're ready to move in with their puppy raisers. It's really important to reduce their stress as much as possible and that's why we're basically just being led by the puppies today. Good boy. Lunch time. That way. Where are you going? Grass is always greener in someone else's bowl. <laughs> Pretty bold these guys, they're not too scared. We like to expose them during this period to new environments and that will help their resilience long term, but also support them during that exposure. <laughs> Kira, come. We always bring their mum in with them when they come into the centre and that helps them to look to mum and mum just goes, no, it's okay, I know this place, this place is fine. So she gives them the support that they need as well. Good girl, sweetheart. While the puppies sleep off their big morning, Dr. Caroline's busy day continues, overseeing the guide dog breeding program. Come on, watch your tail. He's getting a bit excited. Today, breeding male Huxley is making an important donation, with a little help from a female in season. Is Huxley ready? He's ready. Okay. Come on, make it get Good boy, Huxley. Good boy. Good girl. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to collect some semen from Huxley. Huxley is one of our breeding boys. We tend to find our breeding boys love coming to the vet room. <laughs> the reason we're collecting semen is that we like to freeze it and store it for later. Good boy, buddy. What I'm going to do now is I've got three mils. I'll give it a little bit of a shake. The machine has told us that there's 735 million sperm within this sample. He's about average for our boys. <laughs> We've had some boys that have given us over a billion in a sample, so. It, it's really exciting. So from that one sample that we got today, he produced enough to inseminate three girls. And what's really good is that we can keep it in the tank indefinitely. In this program, we're trying to improve the health of the whole colony and breed a dog that is able to confidently guide someone throughout their life. Good girl. Caroline's next appointment is with heavily pregnant Coco. Oh, you're big. Today what we're doing with Coco is we're finding out how many pups are in her belly. You're a good girl. 
And it's really important to know how many are in there because when she's actually whelping, we want to be able to know how many to expect. How many do you reckon? I'm going to go seven or eight, I think. Oh, I'm going to go eight to nine. Andrea and I have a friendly, um, competitive nature, I think. Good job. What a good girl. X-ray. That's one, two. There's so many, they're all jumbled on top yeah. of each other. So what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then an extra head there. Yeah, nine. So I was right. Yep. <laughs> You're right. Four days later, Coco's big moment arrives. So it's 1am and Coco has started her labour. She's been in pre-labour for a couple of hours now and first copy is on its way. There's always so much anticipation. It will actually be two years approximately before we know whether or not those dogs are going to make guide dogs. Here's one of our little babies and a girl. So it's all really exciting and then we've got to wait and see what happens. Good boy. Let's go. It's now been two weeks since Yara's pups arrived at the guide dog centre. Here we go. And little Utah has started the next phase of his journey with puppy raiser Meredith. It is a bit like having a newborn when you get them when they're eight weeks old and you do have to get up in the night and take them out to go to the toilet. You do have to settle them sometimes. Come on, boy, come, sit. I describe it to others as though I'm just borrowing the dog. So it's not mine. I love it like it's mine, but I always know that this dog has a future that's not with me. Stay. Utah is an exceptionally good little puppy. So during the course of the day, we'll do like a five minute little training session where he'll learn to sit, stay, drop, come. Beautiful. Good board. And Utah, give, give. Yes, good boy. Yes, you get lunch too now, don't you? Not yet. Sit. Good boy! He's a lovely, relaxed little boy. Come. Good boy. Good boy! Good boy! He doesn't cry, he doesn't have major separation anxiety. He's, he just listens and he's very gentle and will make a perfect guide dog in the future, I'm quite sure. After a year in Meredith's care, Utah will return to the guide dog centre to start his official training. It's incredibly hard to hand them back every time. There is a lot of tears, um, but you do have to just keep reminding yourself that this dog could go on to change a person's life. And good news for rescue dog Kara, who has made an amazing recovery from eye surgery and has found a loving home after being adopted by her new mum, Gail. The seven-year-old Jack Russell's eyes are no longer painful and her eyesight appears normal. She's relishing her new lease on life with her adoring new family. And rescue turtle Plugger didn't end up giving birth. As sometimes happens in turtles, the immature egg follicles were absorbed back into her body. But the 33-year-old is healthy and happy and loving life at Sea Life Sydney Aquarium. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way. That way. <laughs>